thank you for attending. It's a pleasure to see everybody. I am Sid, I'm the CEO of Arbel, as well as the uh, founding partner, uh, one of the founding partners of D-Climate. And today I wanna talk to you about what this slide is saying. Uh, how does blockchain affect the real world? How do we make it have an impact in areas as varied as climate, insurance, carbon, and so many of the other aspects of the real world that need blockchain. So I'll start with Arbol, which was the first company that uh, I founded. Uh, and Arbol is a platform that allows users of, from different industries, whether it's agriculture, energy, and many others, hedge or ensure their climate risk using data, right? This is the theme, uh, what is called parametric insurance. In regular insurance, you have an adjuster who comes to your farm or business to check the damage. Parametric insurance triggers based on data. And Arbol is a platform for parametric insurance. Example contract would be a farmer that gets paid if rainfall data is very low, or a wind farm that gets paid if wind speeds are very low over a sustained period of time. So why do we need this? Um, one of the things that is obvious reading the news is how much more frequent weather disasters have become. You can see it with Hurricane Ian just going through Florida right now. And how damaging they have become because larger and larger populations live in vulnerable areas. And so the damages keep expanding now over $200 billion a year annually. At the same time, the old insurance model has not been able to keep pace. So over half these damages are uncovered by insurance. That's a huge problem. That means that a random event can set you back, can bankrupt your business, can destroy your livelihood, and you have no way to recover from it. So that is where parametric insurance combined with blockchain offers the uh, you know, opportunity to scale this coverage gap to allow insurance products and other financial products to be presented anywhere in the world, we can get reliable, verifiable data. And that's what Arbol has done, right? We are not solving one piece of the process. We are building the entire process from data that is verified and decentralized to intuitive user interface that allows everybody from commercial farm businesses, agribusinesses, to renewable project developers to interact with the blockchain without worrying what's blockchain, right? That's very important. And combining that with artificial intelligence on the pricing side, how do I price this risk? How, what is the risk of excess rainfall in a part of Texas? And what is the risk of a heat wave in Paris next July? This is all done via AI because this is very difficult to do as a human being. We have to incorporate hundreds of millions of data points. That all is combined with smart contracts that self-execute, that make pay payouts easy. Um, and you don't have customers waiting weeks, months, while in many cases they'll go bankrupt waiting for an insurance check. This happened a lot in the pandemic, by the way, with 25,000 lawsuits around whether a pandemic is covered or not. We're solving all of those issues all at once. So what are some examples, right? So I've mentioned to you about the farmer rainfall. I'll give you a specific example. One of the things we work with is agribusiness. So you take a cotton gin. They take input cotton and make it into yarn. These guys don't get federal crop insurance and all those other benefits that the grower does. But if the local cotton output is zero, they're not gonna be able to run their gins. When the big drought happened in 2012, a lot of the ethanol industry went bankrupt. Why? Because there was no corn. They don't grow corn, but they are very exposed to corn. These are the kinds of supply chain risks. These are the kinds of climate risks that are sitting in supply chains that we try to address. And so we sold insurance on cotton production locally from the exact areas that they source cotton from. And we paid out for one gin $250,000 and you can read the case study, they had no other options. There was no such product out there. We have in fact done millions of dollars of transactions with just cotton gins. 
We work with wind farms, where, as I mentioned, we ensure low wind speeds. We ensure solar for unexpected cloud cover. We ensure all sorts of different things. Uh, we're embedding a, a rainfall protection to vacation platforms. You book a house in the Hamptons and it's uh, rainy every single day, get a partial refund. The possibilities are endless because we've just gotten used to letting weather be a big problem for us. But there are many, many types of products that we can develop to reduce those risks that are spread out all over our supply chains. So how does the decentralized aspect work? Here you have, you know, we did a, pro uh, we did a program with Chainlink in Cambodia. This was with smallholders. When you have smallholder farmers, most of the large reinsurers, it's way below their minimums because the cost of operations is too high to make any profits out of it. So we had Chainlink oracles getting the data and Chainlink adapters executing these contracts for smallholders for a micro insurer who then could embed the drought coverage in their loans. Lending and insurance go hand in hand. These guys can only lend to the farmers because they can embed drought insurance. It's actually a requirement by their bigger bank. And we were able to facilitate that because we, everything is automated via blockchain and trusted and verifiable in a region of the world where trust is not exactly easy to have with institutions. And so the Chainlink Oracle is a key part of that system because we are all getting data from external sources, all types of different sources for rainfall, for temperature, for wind speed, for ocean water temps, and so many other types of data that need oracles to bring it into our system and then create financial products based on that. So putting it all together, you know, we started uh, working with Chainlink when we were just uh, a tiny company, a few guys just testing things out. Now we have grown to a much larger footprint with 700 plus institutional clients. Our revenues have gone from 2 million to 200 million in two years. We, uh, you know, we have over $500 million in capacity to write this risk because you need a pool of capital to write risk. But probably the biggest thing that is really nice to see is that over half our clients have a product now that they would not have had otherwise. Most of the markets we operate in have no other people offering similar products. And it's possible because we can combine technology with capital in a way that so far was not doable. So one of the things that we did day one, right? So Arbel is a mix of centralized and decentralized. Why? Because regulations. Decentralized insurance is difficult in our regulatory framework, full decentralization. But what we did was we did partial decentralization. And we started with a decentralized data infrastructure that we spun out, and that is DClimate. DClimate is an open decentralized network that allows users and contributors to come together and share and sell and buy climate information, whether that is data, whether that's models, whether that's actionable analytics or pla other platforms. It's creating the infrastructure on which others can build climate applications. And the future is the intersection of climate and blockchain. Blockchain will have a lot to do with improving the climate and not just you know, what has been mischaracterized in the press as hurting the climate. So you know, in climate data, and in, we saw the same problems that we saw in insurance, an opaqueness, a lack of access, uh, huge gaps. Large parts of the world, you can only get rainfall and temperature data at their airport. Right? So you'll have a com country, and Cambodia is a great example, huge country with one weather station. How are you going to solve climate change? How are you going to even figure out what's going on if you don't even have basic data in a country like that? So there are gaps. There are no standards. It's, it's a mess, honestly. And, and it, you know, data comes from all these varied agencies. And there's no real incentive to contribute data. And so DClimate is tackling a lot of these issues because that, of course, then helps Arbo build even better parametric insurance products. But it allows many others to build lots of other applications 
on a solid, reliable infrastructure of data that they can trust. The climate's core underlying is a marketplace. Simple. Sell or uh, offer data on it that's verified by chain link adapters and uh, you know you charge what you want to charge and really get some common standards going around sharing of data and then over time models as well. You have a great flood model contributed to the marketplace. But it doesn't stop at data, right? The real power of D-Climate comes from the fact that that becomes a layer one infrastructure for climate on chain. It allows teams from all over the world to bring, come together and work on applications that make sense of the data. If you ever look at raw climate data it's, or raw satellite data, it's hard to make sense of what, what the message is. So we convert that into applications and that could be for construction. How many days of work are you gonna lose on your site as a construction manager due to bad weather? How is your coffee crop doing in a certain part of Colombia? All these things come from that core data source, but we are converting it into actionable analytics. One of the platforms that I want to specifically highlight is Cyclops around that theme. How do we change raw data? I mean terabytes of raw satellite data covering 120 different bands and wavelengths into something actionable, and that's Cyclops. Cyclops allows monitoring of forestry at scale globally at resolutions that are just not available elsewhere, 10 meter by 10 meter. And we're monitoring deforestation, we're monitoring biomass, we're monitoring carbon sequestered without having to send a person. Currently, forest monitoring mostly is either very low resolution, remotely, and expensive. Cyclops will be far more affordable than anything out there, but the current method of sending people on the ground is really impractical. It reminds me of the same problem that insurance had. How can you send people after a storm to check you know, every single house and the damage? It's the same problem in forest. You, spend, uh, you, know, you can spend a year doing sampling around a forest, spend millions of dollars, and most places in the world where forests are truly at risk, like the Congo, is not a place you can send people anyway easily. So Cyclops' job is to change this whole paradigm around monitoring and bring it on chain, make it open source. And we have teams here from all over the world working together to build something truly world class. We get down into, you know, there's a combination of satellite uh, data and imagery coming from D-Climate and then running a suite of artificial intelligence models to really get down to the most minor parts of the forest and if there's degradation, if there's deforestation. And this will be an app not just um, you know, for uh, you know, individuals, but for anybody building a nature-based carbon product on chain. There are a lot of those projects, they all need monitoring. Even in the real world, if you have companies that own forestry for carbon reasons, it will be to monitor that. And this all comes together with a combination of blockchain, oracles from Chainlink, and uh, IPFS decentralized storage, all working together to, again, convert data into actionable intelligence. And so putting it all together, what our mission is, is to take blockchain and make it work for the real world, to have, make it have an impact, and that requires working with everybody from the small commercial farmer to large energy companies to conglomerates to insurers, and we do all of that by bringing together data, technology, and capital on one platform. Thank you very much.